Hi, welcome to the latest instalment of my Fall of Anne Boleyn video series. Of course, as it's the 3rd of May today, I'm taking you back to the 3rd of May 1536. This was the day when Thomas Cranmer, who was Archbishop of Canterbury, who'd just arrived back in London at Lambeth Palace from spending time at his country residence at Knoll, this is the day when he wrote a letter to King Henry VIII. He wrote of his shock at hearing news of Queen Anne Boleyn's arrest, saying that he was clean amazed and that he had never better opinion of women and that he was most bound to her of all creatures living. He said that he wished and prayed that she may declare herself innocent but that if it was found that the Queen was guilty, then he would repute him not a faithful subject who would not wish her punished without mercy. Cramner had just finished his letter to the King when he received a message calling him to the Star Chamber, where he was given further information about what was going on at court, about the investigation into the Queen's affairs. And it's then after that that he added a postscript to his letter to the King, saying that he was sorry such faults can be proved against the Queen as they report. Either Cramner found what was said at this meeting in the Star Chamber about Anne as convincing or he was just being very diplomatic and not wishing to offend the King by defending Anne any further. Now Cramnet may have believed that his good friend the Queen was uh, guilty but on the 3rd of May 1536, there was concern about how the investigation was going. Sir Edward Bainton, who had served Queen Anne as her vice chamberlain, wrote to the treasurer of the household, Sir William Fitzwilliam, stating that only musician Mark Smeaton had confessed to anything and that they weren't having much luck with the other men, i.e. Sir Henry Norris and George Boleyn, Lord Rochford. They weren't confessing to anything. They'd only got, out of the ones they'd arrested, they'd only got one man who would confess to anything. So the investigation wasn't going too well. Also on the 3rd of May 1536, Sir William Kingston, who was constable of the Tower of London, wrote his first report to Thomas Cromwell. Ladies had been appointed to serve the Queen during her imprisonment at the Tower and they'd been carefully chosen. They weren't women that were sympathetic to Anne. These ladies were to act as spies and to report back everything that Anne said to Lady Kingston, who was also in there with them. And then she would pass them on to her husband, Sir William Kingston, and he, in turn, would pass them on to Cromwell. Included in his 3rd of May dispatch is the first mention of Sir Francis Weston, a man who was a favourite of the King and who'd been made a Knight of the Bath um, at Anne Boleyn's coronation in 1533. While talking to her ladies in the Tower, Anne had been trying to figure out why she was in the Tower, what had happened, what were these charges, where had they come from? She was trying to figure things out. And she'd said that she more feared Weston from wits on Monday last. Weston told her that Norris came unto her chamber for her, then for Madge. Anne reprimanded Weston for wooing her cousin, for loving her cousin Madge more than his wife. This, this Madge who was actually being courted by Sir Henry Norris. She reprimanded Weston for wanting Madge. And Weston's response was that he loved one in her house better than them both, and that this one that he's talking about was Anne herself. Anne then said to the ladies that she defied him, she reprimanded him, she told him off. But poor Weston, 
Anne's words were reported by Sir William Kingston back to Cromwell and funnily enough Weston ended up being arrested the next day. So Anne in her rambling had managed to implicate Sir Francis Weston and it was his undoing sadly. So that's what happened on this day in the fall of Anne Boleyn, the 3rd of May 1536. I'll be back tomorrow with another event for you. It is such a sad time, but I do hope you're enjoying getting more information about it. Take care, have a great day. Bye bye.